Welcome to this episode of Meals Made with Love. I'm Jim Karras. Along with my wife, Sabrina, we are the proprietors of Apache Farms, a boutique purveyor of homemade, handcrafted, small batch blended rubs and seasonings. Today, we are at the Beef Palace located at 5895 Warner Avenue in Huntington Beach. The Beef Palace has been serving its customers since 1970, and they specialize in beef, but they carry all cuts of meat, including pork, chicken, turkey, and they have a deli. We're here for some deboned pork butt, also known as pork shoulder, and we're going to ask them to go ahead and truss it for us. Our menu today will be pulled pork sandwiches made with a Carolina mustard barbecue sauce and a side of Carolina coleslaw. And we're going to rotisserie and smoke our pork butt. So come along for the journey. So in addition to uh, beef, but they always have some fresh bread, we're going to go ahead and use these buns because ultimately we hope to do cold pork sandwiches for, for the family and, uh, and so we'll go ahead and use their buns as well. To accompany our pulled pork, we're going to do a Carolina mustard barbecue sauce. This is a traditional sauce. It's mustard based, vinegar based, and uh, let's get started, shall we? It's real simple. We're going to combine the ingredients, simmer them over warm heat for just about five to ten minutes, let them cool down, and uh, and that will be our, our base for our, uh, our barbecue sauce. What I am going to do is I'm going to get this pan going on very, uh, between medium and low heat. I'm going to start with some of the wet ingredients. First we're going to start with uh, one cup of yellow mustard. This is kind of the flavor profile base. Next we're going to put in the vinegar. This is an apple vinegar. Next is some red ketchup.
That was two tablespoons of ketchup and a half cup of uh, apple vinegar. Next, we're gonna put in a teaspoon of, uh, this is Frank's hot sauce. You could use any Louisiana style hot sauce. Um, traditional is Pete's hot sauce, but Louisiana hot sauce, Tabasco, Cholula, um, any of them. We're using Frank's today. This is Frank's original, one teaspoon. And I wanna get all that in there. That'll give it just a little heat. You can also add red pepper flakes or a little cayenne. We're not doing that in this one today because our, we're gonna use the turbo flame. So it's already, I think, got enough heat. Next, we're gonna put in some uh, Worcestershire sauce. This is one tablespoon of just original Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. You could use W sauce or some of the others out there, but really the, uh, the Liam Perrin's is fine. Next is uh, a, uh, a teaspoon of granulated garlic. You can use garlic powder if that's what you have. It, it dissolves probably a little better than what you did. That's what we had. Next, we're gonna do a half teaspoon of black pepper, ground black pepper. One teaspoon of salt, and again, you can vary this to taste. All right, with that, okay, next we're gonna put in a half cup of honey. This is clover honey what we have in the house. You could also use orange blossom, any natural honey, or you could use um, sugar-free honey. You can get that on Amazon. I believe it's um, sun, sunflower um, or sun, sunny delight honey. Uh, that's sugar-free on Amazon. That's usually what we use. I just didn't have any in the house. So we're using clover natural honey. Again, half cup. And then last, we're gonna use a half cup of brown sugar. This is stevia's, um, made with stevia. This is truly a brown sugar. We're using that as a substitute to, to um, regular brown sugar, but you can use regular brown sugar or Again, um, a substitute such as uh, Truvia or even Splenda's brown sugar. And one for baking. And get this incorporated. Looking pretty good already. What we're gonna do with this is once we get this all incorporated and the um, honey breaks down and the sugar dissolves and melts in. We're gonna turn this off and, and let it uh, cool and then we will transfer it to a container to let it marinate in the refrigerator overnight. Right now I've got it on medium heat and I just wanna bring that up just till I start to see a little bit and then I'm gonna turn it down. Um, this looks like it's pretty well incorporated. The honey and the sugar, to me, looks like it's dissolved, which is what our goal is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and shut this down, set it on this other burner over here, and let it cool down a little bit. And then we're going to, um, we're going to transfer it to a pickle jar, a small pickle jar from the grocery store that we cleaned. And once it's cool enough to put in the refrigerator, we'll go ahead and put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate in the refrigerator overnight. To complement our cold pork sandwiches, we're making a Carolina coleslaw. This is a non-mayonnaise-based coleslaw. It's vinegar-based. And it will go well with the uh, mustard barbecue sauce that we made. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and get this sauce pan here set to medium low. We'll let that um, start to warm up as we start incorporating ingredients. First, we're gonna start with our vinegar. This is three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar. You could also use white vinegar if you wanted to, but since we use the apple vinegar in our um, other, bar in our barbecue sauce, thought we'd go ahead and carry it through in this. We're 
we're going to use an equal part of sugar. This time we're using granulated sugar. This is actually a Truvia sugar substitute made from stevia. So we're going to use that in place of regular sugar, but you can totally use granulated sugar if you'd like. This is just our preference. Again, three quarters of a cup to match the vinegar. This is a really easy uh, slaw mix. Next, we're going to do um, some a half a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. This is to give it a little bit of a kick, not much. And again, you could use more or less, but since we're going to use the um, Apache Farms Turbo Flame, which has a little slight heat to it, and we added a little bit of heat to the uh, barbecue sauce, didn't want to use more than just a little bit for this. This also has um, celery seed. one teaspoon of the celery seed. And again, that was a half a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. I'm going to give this just a quick little stir. Again, similar with the barbecue sauce, our goal here is to get the vinegar and the granulated sugar, in our case the um, Truvia sugar, to incorporate the sugar to break down and so it just takes a little bit for that to, to warm to temp. Next is some dry mustard. We're using a um, teaspoon, a teaspoon of dry mustard. Half teaspoon of ground black pepper. And one teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. Again, that to, to taste, you can certainly adjust that. I think uh, for our slaw, um, a teaspoon is right. We're doing one hit of cabbage. We're also going to add a medium red onion, a medium sweet onion, and one, um, I don't know if we're using a red or a uh, yellow bell pepper, but we're going to add bell pepper to it. Uh, and that'll be chopped. So, I think what we're going to do on this one for tonight is uh, we're planning on doing our cook tomorrow. So, so for tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to get this incorporated, let it cool down, transfer it to a container to marinate alongside of the Carolina mustard barbecue sauce in the refrigerator. And they'll be happy campers overnight. And then in the morning, we'll go ahead and get our uh, cabbage and all of our other veggies in the slaw, uh, incorporated with this, and then let it marinate for a couple hours during the cook. So this is a, a approximately a 10 minute process on this, so we'll let that go for a little bit. Again, you don't want to bring this to a boil. You really want it right at a simmer, drop it down to about medium to uh, low, and let it go for about 10 minutes. Once that sugar is broke down, we'll get it transferred. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a stir. That you can see that sugar has broke down. This looks pretty good. I think we're there. Ooh, that smells good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to turn this off, move this off the heat. Okay, what I think I want to do is go ahead and add this oil. This is a half a cup of grapeseed oil. You can use oh, oh several different oils. Um, avocado oil would be good, or olive oil, maybe an extra virgin olive oil. Um, we're using grapeseed. It's um, it takes on the flavors of other things, and so that's the one we're choosing. Again, a half a cup. It smells really good. It has a sweet little um, acidic from the vinegar, but it's 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 good. It smells good. Um, you can definitely the mustard. You can, you can uh, smell the mustard as well. 
So I'm gonna get that nice and incorporated. I'm gonna let that cool down. And then like I said, we're gonna go ahead and transfer this and let it hang out in the fridge overnight. The Carolina coleslaw dressing has been marinating in the refrigerator overnight. And so the nice thing about putting it in a jar, a, a used jar, is you can get it really well incorporated before you use it. So that's a good little thing to know. All right, we're gonna start. What we have for our slaw is we have cabbage, fresh, this is a, a this was a large head of cabbage. We used about three quarters of the head because it was so large. Recipe assumes a medium-sized cabbage. And then two carrots, two regular fresh carrots uh, uh, grated, some chopped um, red bell pepper, grated uh, sliced onion, a red onion. And this is a uh, uh, sweet onion um, or yellow onion, some people would call it. But, uh, Anyway, so that's, that's the ingredients. It's really simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the cabbage and I'm going to put in, I'm going to estimate, we still may not use quite all of this because this was a huge head of cabbage. And in our cabbage, we did a little combination of chop and grate and slice. And that's just to change the, the texture. You can do it how you know, however you prefer. Um, but I kind of like all the different textures in it. It just is a little different. So there's some bigger leaves and some really fine leaves. And I think we'll start there. I may incorporate more of that as we go. I just don't want to overfill the bowl. Next, I'm going to incorporate the red onion. And same thing, I think I'm gonna put, yeah, I think that will go. All right. Next we'll do our, our sweet onion. And this is all going to get mixed up really well. Hardest part about this is uh, finding a bowl big enough. So we had to pull out the old Tupperware bowl from a cabinet way down below in the kitchen. And we don't get out too much. It's great for potato salads, macaroni salads, or Coleslaws. I'm going to use my hands for the final, but I didn't want to do that at first just because I didn't want onion all over myself while I'm still handling these other items. That looks pretty good. Okay, next is the carrots. Same thing, I think we'll be able to use all of those. What's great about this particular slaw is uh, it's colorful. Half 
That's the uh, red bell pepper. That is not usually used in most. That is not usually used in most coleslaws, but for the Carolinas and for vinegar, it's a great addition. Um, and it's not. The one thing about Carolina slaws, I'm just saying generically Carolina slaw, but Carol, North and South Carolinas both have very regional variations of their coleslaws, ranging from mayonnaise-based or combination of mayonnaise and vinegar to straight vinegar, and even within that, lots of variations. Um, some with a little bit of mustard seed, some without, and so, uh, just like everywhere else, they have their regionals. So this is kind of the amalgamation of just a Carolina slaw from the greater region. All right, let's set that there for a second. Okay, so I think we're ready for the marinade or the uh, dressing now. Um, and again, this has a combination of celery seed, dry mustard, red pepper flakes, salt, and pepper. So let's get this one last shake, and then we're not gonna use all of this, I don't think, but I, I'm not sure how much we'll need. We took some of that cabbage out. I'm gonna start with about that to start. I don't want it too wet. but I definitely want... Looks like I am gonna use it on it. Sure smells good. I may need to add a little salt to taste, but I'm gonna do that later after it's had a chance to hang out in the refrigerator. We're gonna put this back in the refrigerator there to the grill pretty soon and get our pork shoulder or pork butt fired up and start to get it cooked. I anticipate between a five and a six hour cook. I don't know for sure, but it's a eight pound pork butt, so that's what I think. And let's do a dessert for it. I'm going to take a quick taste. I want to get everything in here. Mm. That has a sweetness. Slight vinegar taste, but you can taste the, the red flakes. It's got just a I mean, slight hint of heat. That's really a good slaw. All right, so I think we're good. I'm gonna button this up and we'll put it back in the fridge and head out to the grill. Hi, okay, we're gonna get started uh, with the, our, our pork butt. We have, uh, as you'll recall, the, the butcher yesterday tied it up. It's all ready, so what we're gonna do today is we're going to pat it down. We're gonna apply a uh, uh, kosher salt uh, to it and then uh, we're gonna add a very liberal um, sprinkling of uh, Apache Farms Turbo Flame Hot Rub. Okay, now that we've got the uh, pork butt dried, um, we've transferred it to a cutting board. I flipped it back over. We're going to do the scores. And the, the purpose of this is just really to, to let this cap, um, you'll help it crisp up. And, uh, and it also helps it soak in the flavors of the dry rub and later on the barbecue sauce. And we're gonna do a crisp cut pattern. For 
over your time. All right, now we're gonna go across the other way. It's tied. I wanted a smaller knife to be able to get in there. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. All right, so next we're gonna start with a little bit of uh, kosher salt. We'll do the, the fat side, then we're gonna flip it, the fat cap. This is a large piece of meat. Again, this is eight pounds, so I don't wanna to go too crazy, but I do need a good coat of salt. This helps, salt helps draw the moisture through the meat. Okay, and we're gonna do a couple coats of of uh, Apache Farms Turbo Flame Dry Rub, but we want to put a nice liberal coat on there. And if, it, if you get clogged, just tap it. This has an anti clumping agent in it. And we use rice holes, but it's still sometimes gets hung up in the spray cap. And like I said, we're gonna do a couple different rounds of this, so we'll come back and get this again. That looks pretty good. All right, let me flip this over if I can. And I'm gonna do another pat down. It's still a little moist. Salt. Since we're not on the fat cap side, I want to pat that in. Fat cap, it doesn't really hold it. I think I'm going to take that cap off for this side because I really want a nice amount on there. The nice thing about having a rub that doesn't have salt in it is the meat will only absorb a certain amount, especially absent of salt. And although we did use an amount of salt sprinkling it, you can add whatever you feel looks good. This helps with the bark. And so you don't have to be too nervous about putting too much on. It's only going to absorb the flavor that it absorbs. That looks really good. I'm going to flip that over and throw one more. And I'm not going to salt the side because I was pretty liberal, but I am going to get a little bit of this. You want to cover as much as you can, but don't worry. We're going to do this out on the barbecue as well. So we'll make sure we get all sides. One of the cool things about using a uh, rotisserie is we'll give it one final sprink, sprinkle as it goes around. All right, that looks pretty good. A little more on this this side here. It's gonna be nice. And look at these ends. Last thing we have to do is um, insert our probe. So I'm going to try to get that right here because we're limited on where we can put this so it'll clear. So I'm going to put it on this end. This is the end that will be towards the center of the, the grill. So I think that's the most logical place 
we'll still be checking it with another probe when we pull it off, but that'll give us an indication at least as when we're close to doneness. For pork butt, my goal is to get this at uh, between 250 and 300. I'm gonna probably settle on this grill about 275. It's kind of hard to get it below that uh, consistently. So when I'm in the 275 range, I'll be happy. I figure this cook is somewhere between five and six hours, we'll see. And then our temperature for uh, pulling it is about 205. We may pull it around 203 and let it set. But definitely want it over two and less than 210. About 205. All right, we'll head out to the grill. Okay, so we're out at the grill. Uh, we're gonna add just a little bit more of the hot rub in a minute. I wanna show you our setup, so come on in and take a look at this. We'll get the uh, get the rotisserie going in a second. What we have today is we got the pork butt centered on the grill. We have a smoke box. In the smoke box, we're using wood chips. Today, we're using apple wood chips and mesquite wood chips. I did add a little bit of water to this cook, um, mainly because it's such a big cut of meat. I figured I, I might need to add water. We're gonna also spritz as we go along. So now I'm gonna get the uh, rotisserie going and I'm gonna add just a little, if that comes around, I'm gonna add a little just in the bare spots. We'll come back around. And what falls to the bottom, we'll still season it. It may cause a little bitterness in there. We'll see. And if it is, I'll, I'll stop and pull that tray out. But I think we're good. Honestly, I think we're looking really good. All right, and with that, we're gonna let it, we're gonna let it go. We'll check our smoke. I've got the meter set up on my phone. And so we'll be back in about uh, half an hour to just make sure everything's looking good. And then we'll start spritzing after at least an hour. We'll be back. Okay, we're right about the one hour mark. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this. And as you can see, um, we've already started, it's start tightening up a little bit, starting just with a very light, uh, bark. The, the, um, seasoning has definitely adhered to it well. Our water's still looking good. Just a little bit ago, I added some more wood chips. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn off this fits for a second. And we're going to do something a little different. As you'll recall, we did our, uh, Carolina honey mustard barbecue sauce last night. That's been marinating overnight in the fridge. We pulled this out this morning and it's had a chance to come up almost to room temp. It's got a little chill on it, but it's fine. We're still early into the cook. And I am going to, rather than just rely on spritzing and, uh, and trying to slather this, we want to maintain a good bark. And so the way to do that is to simply get the flavor from within. We could have done this on the cutting board in the kitchen, but I wanted to get this dried out and tightened up a little bit. And I wanted to make sure that we were good with the spits and everything else. So what we're going to do now is we're going to inject this. Oh, it smells so good. You can smell that mustard. And we can do this again later on in the cook if we think we need to. I'm not sure that we will. Okay, now I'm going to rotate this around.
we're gonna go through the fat cap also. I'm not gonna do as much on this side because we're already seeing it drip out. I don't want too much of it down in that pan. But I'm gonna do one more. Yeah, about here. I'm gonna head that in towards the center. And that should be more than enough. And at this point, our wood box has been refilled. We've got plenty of water. We're good shape. I just let the temperature out. Let me get that rotisserie going. We can see a nice round. What is down there, same thing. So far, we've not had any charring, so I'm not worried about any bitterness. The bitterness comes when, if that were to start to burn. So at this point, we're, we're looking really pretty good. I may do this one more time, but I, honestly, I think we're in good shape. All right, so we're gonna let it go at least another hour. And because I'm going this route, I probably won't do a wrap. I was thinking about doing a wrap, but honestly, I think we want this bark. So we're not gonna do a wrap. So we'll get a good crisp bark. We'll be back. Okay, we're about four and a half hours into our cook and the um, internal temperature of our pork shoulder is about 167. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, take a look at it, and I'm gonna probably pull the smoke box because at this point, um, it's not gonna take on any more smoke. And again, I'm always worried about bitterness. So let's see how it looks. We're getting some great bark. So what I'm gonna do is let that rotate around. And then as soon as I get to a spot, Okay, that should be good. Looks like we're, our smoke is pretty much done anyway. That is warm. We'll let that cool down. And everything else looks pretty good. All right, in just a little bit, we're gonna come back and start the baste. We'll be back. Hi, okay, we're about six and a half hours into our cook. So we've gone about 30 minutes more than I expected. And we're gonna go probably another 30 minutes. We're right now at an internal temperature on the, on the phone the app reading at 193. And so I'm looking to go to 203. So we got 10 more degrees to go. So I held back on doing my final uh, baste, but uh, I'm gonna at least give it one uh, little bit of slather of the barbecue sauce. We did pull out the Carolina barbecue sauce. It has been uh, come up to room temp, which is okay because it is, um, you know, a vinegar base. There's really nothing in here, so it's okay. I don't even wanna make it real cold as I put it on. And as this goes around, I'm just gonna slather it up. We're gonna do more of this once we bring it inside. But you'll see as we go around, we've got really nice bark. And we're gonna take what's down in that tray and I'm gonna pull that out after I get the pork shoulder off of the uh, grill. And uh, I'm gonna take a look at that and I think I'm gonna give that a little stir, mix it up and use some of that inside the uh, whole pork. I'll, I'll probably drizzle it over this one time. Okay, I think that's good. 
All right, so we're gonna let that go. As soon as it hits 203, we'll be back, pull it off, and we'll get it transferred uh, onto a uh, half tin and ready to uh, rest for a little bit before we um, go ahead and uh, use the forks and pull it apart. See you in a bit. Okay, we've done, we're about seven and a half hours. I think we're there. The uh, meter is showing it uh, that we're come up to temp 203. So let me um, let me pull this up and shut this off for a second. Actually, I'm gonna let that go over right there. Ooh. All right, that looks good. Let me come around that other side. I'm going to go through the fat cap right here and get right into the center of that. I'm pleased with that. All right, we are it's showing a little less than 200, but we are definitely there. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're gonna. I'm going to take. I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna transfer it. I'm gonna first take out the water, set it aside. We're gonna transfer this into the um, half tin on the counter in the house. I'm gonna go ahead and cut away the, uh, the uh, twine and take off the uh, forks. We'll get the uh, spit out of it and then uh, we'll let it rest for a few minutes and we'll be back. So just a quick note, um, there's the uh, renderings and remember that also had some of the original barbecue sauce in that. When we're done transferring, I'm gonna pull some of that and we'll, uh, we'll drizzle that over the um, pork shoulder after we get it um, set up in the tin before we pull it apart. So uh, that's our plan. Okay, our pork shoulder has been resting about 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. We did drizzle the rest of the drippings from the pan up in the barbecue. So I may not have a whole lot of uh, extra marinade to put in but there's our finished product I'm going to use these meat claws these are culinary meat claws from my good friend Matt Perez Matt is an awesome chef and uh, it's a I appreciate this very much these were Christmas presents so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to just pull this apart let's see how we do oh my gosh The goal, hopefully, is to leave bark on. So we're gonna finish this up and we'll be back. All right, so we got the rest of it uh, uh, pulled apart to what we're gonna use tonight. As you can see, it's plenty juicy. We, um, uh, we're not gonna add any more of the marinade. I did drizzle what's over it. That has since soaked through the meat and I think we're good. We will um, have marinade there for the barbecue sauce for uh, for everyone to make their sandwich individually, uh, put on the mouth they want. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, build a plate and we'll be back. That's it for this episode. Please like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to stay up to date as we publish new episodes. We would love for you to leave a comment to share your thoughts with us and our viewers. In today's episode, we use TurboFlame Hot Rub to season our pork butt. To order our products, visit our website at apachefarms.net. We sell and ship to all locations throughout California. Until next time, I'm Jim Karras. Thanks for watching, and remember, good taste begins with a little love.
PKG Media Works.